Hello, everyone. I'm John Furrier. We are reporting on the ground here in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound exclusive conversations at Coin Agenda, covering all the action at Restart Week, a ton of events, cryptocurrency, blockchain, all the people are here with the local ecosystem. The Cube is here. It's great to have you on. Thanks for joining. Blockchain innovation is today global. This is a revolution way bigger than the internet itself. Programmable money, programmable contracts, it wipes out finance, it wipes out legal, it wipes out governance in many ways. There's no central authority. You have access to open source software. It's fully connected. So now is the time to make it translate. We've all heard about the Steam digital transformation. It's businesses that if they don't evolve and adopt blockchain, AI, all these other things, they have a threat of being put out of business. It is extremely competitive. A new set of stakeholders, investors, global players, governments, are it's happening now. You have a chance to be a part of an economy without a permission of a centralized organization. I have to pay 200 people in 40 countries and it's an unholy mess with withholding taxes and concerns around money transfer costs. It's a hassle. Central. It's a nightmare. They got currency control, so you're only allowed to move a certain amount of capital out of the country legally. So what happens now, you buy cryptocurrency and you, you can effectively invest in assets around the world. This is making it much easier to contribute, to help people, yeah. to get help, and you don't have to go to school. There's a very big influx of young talent and talented minds at that, right? And this is really changing the revolution landscape. You've got the radical Burning Man hippie guy all the way to a three-piece suit. Yeah. And that diversity is very, very rich. A lot of people are scared. They're like, whoa, hold on. Slow down, we're not going to prove it. And then the other half saying, no, this is the future. So you have two competing forces colliding. For some reason, crypto really pokes at people's biases. You know, why does it have any value? And I go, well, why does the United States dollar have any value? I mean, you've got full faith and credit of the government that's in debt by $20 trillion. You know, is that a good idea? Most people that come here start with the, the what, the how, and people are scared. But the young people, are like, yo, this is happening. This is not a moment. This is a movement. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, I would say, 1996, yeah. 97 of the uh, internet bubble. It's just starting. People know there's something really magical. They don't quite know what to do. You know, America really grew because Europe used to have all the controls. And so the capital basically left Europe and it went to America. And now what's happening 300 years later is America has all the controls and the capital's starting to go elsewhere. So a new liberation's happening. Incredible resources are now being poured in problems that were ignored for many, many years. We need more women in blockchain. So all you ladies, come join us. And what is beautiful is that blockchain is doing it open source. It's accelerating the tech. These ideas are being freely shared, whereas before there was bottlenecks in the collaboration aspect. If we're able to write a contract and a thousand people be able to verify that contract and we're able to transfer money from one person to another without the two parties being involved, we've got a perfect scenario. Security and speed and fairness all at the same time. You can create these chains of trust and that can happen anywhere in the world. You're on a level playing field. If you have 4G connectivity, now you can compete globally on it and be a part of the global economy. So if you're someone who's in the uh, emerging uh, developing world and you want to begin to build wealth, and you'd like to own a piece of first world real estate. And today, the minimum is about $1,000, uh, but by implementing the blockchain further, they want to eventually get down to $1. You can buy a piece of real estate and enjoy the returns on that. I want to solve the wealth gap, and I truly believe we can do it when we can allow anyone, anywhere, to invest in good quality assets. I can't do it with the current system. There's too many friction costs. The killer app, right, is money. It's paying people. That is the killer app of the blockchain right now. Let's say that money is software, and it is software. So if you buy something with a credit card, what do you think is happening? It's all software. And what has happened is open source software has always eventually won with respect to closed source software. So proprietary money is probably back on its heels because open source money is coming. Something like that will give liquidity to a lot of small business owners. America is a country of small business owners. Across the globe, it's about small business owners. It's an interesting model. You know, uh, you don't have to give up any equity. You don't have to give up any board seats. Yeah. Right? It's much leaner, much simpler. If you're an investor, you got to get a pound of flesh somewhere. Is it just getting in on the discounted tokens? Um, is there a little liquidity going on? When you think about, you know, private sale, pre-sale, 
is 99% a token uh, deal, right? Although equity is coming in because a lot of more venture capital is coming in, and they're demanding a piece of the actions from a company and equity perspective. It's equity, uh, might be future revenue, sometimes it's dividends or the opportunity to get dividends, so it's a combination of- You have a preference, of, you care? Um, you know, at the end of the day, equity is always, always preferable. There is a provision in the 1934 Securities Act called Section 12G that allows us basically to go public by telling the SEC we're doing it without having to delay it to wait for their permission. After 60 days, it's you're effective. In. So we'll continue to clear comments, oh, but yeah. but the thing is, with tokens, who knows how long that'll take? I mean, is the SEC going to shepherd something through with crypto on it? Are they going to make it take five years? I don't know. Shepard from event to event all over the island. This is the new home of crypto. So the world is moving too fast today for a big country to keep up. It's all going to happen now in this next century at the city level. And so we work a lot with cities. Or smaller countries. Or small countries. Because I know Estonia, Armenia, Bahrain's got, you know, Dubai envy. So I mean, every country wants to be the crypto country. Multiple small countries are going to come into the space which they know now they can get the capital flowing into their company and they're going to allow their rules to be lax. They're going to let capital flow, flow through. And then US will have to change, or maybe UK will have to change. Whoever is against this will have to change. In the first world, a lot of what we're talking about is a nice to have. It's, it's sort of a bit of a game, and if I can participate. But where I come from in the emerging world, it's a necessity. Yeah. There, there are no other solutions. Yeah. So if you live in South Africa, or China, or India, and you want to get your money into a first world country like England, Australia, or America, it's, it's very, very difficult, and, and virtually no one can do it. But it's a major problem, because you want wealth preservation, you want a plan B, you want your children to be able to go to a first world university, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Puerto Rico being a free associated state of the United States of America is like the best place to actually test this philosophy <laughs> and push for that. For infrastructure, for you know, internet, for all sorts of different things in terms of building the best infrastructure, the new, newest, best in class. For your business, it's 4% corporate taxes and individual, it's 0%. Now, that's... But you got to move here. You got to move here, okay? But you don't have to give, you, give away your U.S. citizenship. No taxes are great. Uh, at the same time, they fall in love with the island. So it's amazing because to me, Puerto Rico is a combination of LA's weather, San Francisco's open-mindedness, uh, and Barcelona's you know deep European history. It's just a really beautiful place. And it's U.S. territory, so it's a short hop and a jump to the states if you need to. Most people in America, mainland, sort of think they're going to a foreign country because it's treated that way by our government. How do I come to Puerto? Rico, do it right, not offend the culture, enable them, come together. What's your experience with the playbook? When they come to us, they get the grants plus the relocation services for their business and themselves. So they write a big check to you guys <laughs> for the service, but it's they, you guide them through the entire process. Yes, we do. And there's real energy here because there's a social movement underneath the entire cryptocurrency movement. And that's to basically help your fellow man or women. All this activity is really going to give a, a shot in the arm to the Puerto Rican economy. And we're bringing our funds and we're bringing our advisories and we're bringing our, our business. So thank you. I just want to say I'm, I'm really very impressed. Mm -hmm. The hurricane was a horrible uh, atrocity that happened, but now we have this blank canvas to create a vision for Puerto Rico. So what we're doing is we're connecting every single university on the island to work on open source projects to like make solutions for the private sector. They know that if they can buy power on a cell phone like they're already doing for other goods and services, now we've got a game changer. This is Restart Week, and one of the uh, other things that we've done is help all of the conferences come together collaborate rather than compete, so go into the same week and put all of these satellite groups around it. And then we blanketed a, a, a week around it so that we had one place for people to go and look for all of the events and, and also for, some, for them to understand a movement. Without the education piece, it's very difficult for people to kind of get caught up to speed because there's some technical things you need to understand to really apply this technology into the business world. The other day we had an event where we taught 50 people how to create a smart contract from scratch. Those are 50 people who are not the same anymore. Ecosystem's developing. You got entrepreneurs, yeah. you got projects, you got funding coming in, but as it's gonna be a fight for the ecosystem because you can't have zillion ecosystems. There are definitely some you know, legalities and you know, regulatory aspects that you know, put some concerns on a lot of you know, people's mind. Since its inception, you've seen people and media, and mainstream media in particular, target Bitcoin, and they're just adopting the government narrative saying, oh, everyone in this industry is corrupt. Oh, everyone in this industry is an ICO scammer. Oh, everyone in this industry is a, you know, a drug runner, and they're all selling drugs on the dark web. And, and it's like, you know what? Like, you can do some research and do a bit better than that. Traditional media 
they want to take down everybody that they don't consider, you know, uh, like a birds of the same feather. There actually are a lot of scammers and a lot of like uh, dark forces inside of the cryptocurrency movement. So that's why I think we welcome kind of more regulatory influence because, you know, none of us want to see bad actors in the space. We've seen folks go out, raise, you know, really big amounts of capital with no product roadmap, no business development roadmap, um, no real way to get from zero to X. Are they trying to shoehorn a regular business onto the blockchain <laughs> and ex just assume that by adding crypto at the end of you know toilet paper they're going to get something? I had uh, another founder tell me that you know my tokens are worth hundred million. Yeah. I'm like, you you don't have a user, you just have a product. Your tokens are worth shite if you ask me. It's it's worth zero. I can tell my house is worth hundred million dollars. It, it's only worth as much as the top buyer. How much is he willing to pay? We really need hardcore reputation systems in our industry and, and in the, for the world. I think 2018 is going to be the year of, of clarity on regulation, and I think that's where Puerto Rico comes in and plays a major role. Just to see the thousands of people who have come here to support these several conferences has been amazing. My most surprising thing, though, is the amount of people that have told me that they bought a one-way ticket and have no intention of going home. Wow. So to make Puerto Rico your home, I think is yeah. a really amazing first step. When I go to the supermarket, everywhere I go, it's full of American and people from outside. And when you ask them where you're from, and they will tell you from Puerto Rico. And this is gonna become the epicenter of this multi-billion dollar market. We need to have people prepared for this. Yeah. We have to create the transparency. So the beauty of the transparency is there's actually privacy baked in. Yeah. And that's what I love about blockchain is it has all of the good things. Yeah. All communities need to evolve, in my opinion, to technology communities. Open networks of governance where we have peer-to-peer -peer distribution of finance and of resources in a way that allows people to aggregate around the marketplaces that are actually benefiting the way that they believe the world should work. We're going to need tools that far surpass what's currently available in terms of the messengers, the websites, all these things. For 20 years, the internet has been free. It's a really beautiful thing for consumption, and open source is the absolute right methodology for software. When it comes to your own content, a reward makes sense. Everybody is gonna to get to play together across every device. The developers are gonna get rewarded for creating content. People are gonna be rewarded for creating things inside of the games. And the players are gonna get rewarded for getting to the top levels of all the games. And we're gonna reward them through our cryptocurrency. If we begin to own our self-sovereign identity, then when we're owning our data, that's the foundation for universal yeah. basic income. Communication, completely frictionless. Payment, completely frictionless and governance completely frictionless. And we have to put this all together. Who wins here? The average citizen entrepreneur. That is true. average citizen player that wants to start something, whether it's a, a banking, a service provider of some sort, an entrepreneur, or a new financial instrument or firm. Yes. All have greenfield opportunity here. The first thing I would tell founders is to reach out, okay? This community is very, very supportive. Like, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to other guys, LinkedIn, Facebook, or come to these events and say your idea and you need help because you will need help. You cannot run this alone, okay? You are running a company, you're running your team. Have a good team, that's the first thing. You gotta be vigilant and you gotta yeah. take every precaution possible. Keeping your money in a hard wallet, not keeping your private keys on your computer. If you're using a centralized system, those centralized systems are really easily exploitable. Strategic partnerships, advisors, founding team, and then show the idea to the people. Explain yourself frankly and honestly, and I think the community will reward you to go and find a drink. Whether you're a Fortune 500 company or a startup, it's all about building the community, and I believe that whether it's utility token or security or yeah. a combination of the two, it provides an incredible vehicle to ultimately be the catalyst to your community. And if you're the catalyst to your community adding value, then you're going to build a company of value. It's always going to be led by the business model because you need something to act as the power pull to pull the thing along, right? And you can continuously pump capital into something, but if the model is wrong, it's just going to drain. And it's going to go to inefficient systems, and in the end, maybe do some help, but, but a, a very small percentage of the capacity of what it could do. Then the advice would be to entrepreneurs, don't fret about the infrastructure, just nail your business model. That's right. And Because the switching cost might not be as high as you think. That's right. Where in the old days, when we grew up, yeah. you, you made a bad technology decision, you're out of business. Yeah. The first advice that I give my clients is to stop. This, this business has too much FOMO in it. Yeah. Right? Fear of missing out. Um, so not just because everybody's out there doing an SEO, you should be doing an SEO. Right? Yeah. Forty-six percent of ICOs have already failed. Already failed. Start with the business. Get the business yeah. mechanics down right. So free cash flow, unique value proposition, product market fit. Once you've done the business, think about the token model. Yeah. Right? 
the token model has to go in handy now with your business model and revenue model. And once you figure out the business and token models, now it's time to think about compliance. I'm going to raise money in the US and abroad. I'm, I've decided to go with the security token, mm -hmm. hypothetical yep, instance. Absolutely. What do I do? Is there for you an incentive mechanism or is it a fundraising mechanism or both? Who's going to be my user? Who's going to use this token, right? Are it going to be moms, dads, hospitals? Like, what's my target? And then how are they going to use it? And are they going to hold it? Are they going to sell it? Are they going to trade it? So all these different things define the token model. Once you get your token actually authenticated, realized, everything's transparent, and it gets on that secondary market, it's better to use that to invest in anything you need to invest in. Get everybody incentivized around your token, all your employees, all your vendors, everybody incentivized around that token. It's a thousand percent more powerful than a dollar because a dollar doesn't go up in value and your token, your token can go up and down. And as soon as you find just one spark that blows up everybody, all boats rise equally. It's awesome. It's, it's not necessarily the time to you know, crack open the champagne. You still have to demonstrate product market fit you have to help build a market in, in our particular case. And so there's a lot of hard work the launching that lies just, ahead. It's, it's a start exactly. line, it's not just, the finish exactly. line. Exactly, it's only a step along the whole process. You know what made people get it? You showed them the money. Yeah. <laughs> you showed them the money. Sometimes people don't, you can explain yeah. these concepts that are world changing, yeah. super high level or whatever. People are not actually going to get it until it's useful to them. Average business people and senior business people who have typically been shut off to the idea of blockchain are now seeing this as very real and here to stay. Momentum is just beginning. It's going to be amazing what these guys come up with. That's one of the things I love about doing this thing, right? I'm an old guy <laughs> and I get to hang around these smart young people. It makes me feel young again. Yeah. But the other thing that we have, and I think you to share it as well, is we have to offer to these young guys experience. I think we just invented a new category in the ICO category, an advisor token. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you have to have the stomach for it and I think you just have to be as educated and as uh, as you can. What government entity can resist for the long term something that's actually trying to provide a better and better and better financial infrastructure? You should be able to participate in many different nations who have many different economies uh, that are all really cooperating interdependently to create the best possible life for all human good. One dollar will not change your life, but if you change your habits, you'll change your financial destiny. Yeah. And so my philosophy is get it to a dollar so that every single person can participate. And once yeah. you start to learn good habits around money and wealth, the rest just, it's, it's, a, it's it, a formula. Like It's a flywheel, kicks exactly. in. The world will become a better place. We'll have better companies. Positive impact is not counter to profit. They go hand in hand. The Puerto Rico movement, it's a movement, a lot of tech entrepreneurs, capital, uh, investors, the pioneers in the blockchain, decentralized internet are all here. This is like the Silicon Valley of uh, crypto, right? Yeah, I think they're yeah. calling it Crypto Island. Crypto <laughs> Island, yeah. It's, it sounds like a TV show. We should be on it. It's like, it's not lost. It's Crypto Island. Exclusive coverage from Puerto Rico. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier getting the signal here out of all the noise in the market. This is what we do. This is theCUBE's mission. Great trip. Restart week. Blockchain Unbound, Coin Agenda, open content, that's what it's all about. Community, power to the people. Thanks for watching.